This is Lynn Hirschberger, Lynn H. from ColorJoy.com. Today I'm going to demonstrate a folk knitting technique, which is a circular cast-on. I have specified it in my pattern called the Something Different No Pearl Socks. And I don't believe many people have done it. It is related a little bit to a circular cast-on in crochet, and also it reminds me of... Cat Bordy's Mobius cast on. So if you've done either of those, that should help you a lot. I made a little loop in my tail because I found myself knitting with the tail earlier today. So we're going to make it harder for me to do that. Uh, you want about six inches hanging down, and you only need one needle for this technique. So first you're going to, whoops, first you're going to take this six inches and you're going to go around your fingers and over again, uh, just a basic loop, and then you're going to take the end from the back to the front to make just a simple overhand knot. That's all you do there. This end is going to just be ignored, it's going to stay forward, and I'm going to use a short needle here so I can move a little bit better. This end, I'm just going to hold on to it while I'm working so it doesn't undo. Now, the first stitch goes like this. You just take your yarn and you take your needle from behind and you go like that and that is your first stitch. It's kind of hard to believe at this point, but now what we're going to do is go into the circle. And once you go into the circle, you are going to do the same thing you did before. You are going to take your needle and go behind and swoosh it up and then go through the, the circle again. Now you've got two stitches. You're going to go again top to bottom, top and then bottom. So you go from the back and get a loop, then go into the circle and go above and swoosh, and then come back out of the circle. There's two more. We need eight for this particular pattern over and under, and over through the circle, swoosh from the back down and through the hole two, four, six, eight. We now have eight stitches and this huge loop. So the next thing you're going to do is you're going to pull this end so that the loop gets smaller. And depending on your yarn, it might be a little sticky, but I've done it even with mohair, so I know, or a mohair blend, I know it will work if you just believe it will. And that's about where I'm going to go with this right now. Later I'll tighten it up even more. The bottom line is it can stay loose until you work in your ends. Then when you work in your ends, you're going to take this end and actually stab through this side and this side of that drawstring and it won't ever come undone. So now that we've done that part, we're going to move like, like we're doing an I-cord. If you've ever done that, uh, you're going to take your stitches from this end and you're going to slide them up to the other end. This takes us so that we, we're basically knitting around this loop, but we've got all the stitches on one half of that circle so far. Now I'm going to grab a second needle. Right now we're just going to make it so that we can go around the circle. We're going to pretend we have four needles, but I'm going to use a, a marker instead of one needle so it won't be so unwieldy. Now I'm going to go through this first, and I'm going to stitch it. I'm going to stitch four here. Now, whenever you go through this, let's see, nope. there we go. I'll tell you that part later. I'm going to grab another. You notice we're, we are going around this loop in the normal counterclockwise way that knitting does. I just go into that and pull it through, and this, and pull it through, and this. Doesn't matter how you knit. I tend to knit continental most of the time with my yarn around my left finger but it doesn't matter too much. Okay, so we're, there we are. If we want to tighten it up a little bit more, we again can do this. And right now we've got a little hole right there. And I can just, and now there isn't. There's just a little, a little gathering. It's kind of like a little flower. It's really cute. Okay, so now we've done this whole circle. We want to do a second circle. And at this point we're going to do one stitch and an increase, and then another stitch and an increase. I need to push this down so I can knit there. I'm going to pick up this other needle. Um, I guess I'll do this part with my right hand. Now, we're going to increase with something called, 
it's down there, uh, a backward loop or an E-wrap uh, or a half hitch. What you do if you're using your right hand, you take your hand over this over this yarn and you go down, pointing down, pointing to the ground, pointing to yourself and back up. You've got a nice loop there and you'll put it on the needle that, that you're going to put your made stitches on, which would always be the right hand side. So there you go. And that, do you see that it has a little cross right there and that makes a good solid stitch. You can make them either way. You can do this, but then it's kind of clumsy because you have to go to the back and pull it in this way. Uh, it doesn't matter how you make the loop. As long as it's crossed at the bottom, it will make a decent one. Now when we're working with our left hand, I, let's see, I've got yarn up like this. This is how I hold my yarn. Some people wrap it. And what you're going to do then is you're working and now you want to put a stitch here from a backward loop. And if you're doing this, you can do it without really listen, uh, letting go. So what you're going to do is push your finger toward you and you see that it has a little cross right here where my thumb is. There's a cross. And so you want to go up that finger and take that stitch with the cross at the bottom and put it on there and then you can just put your finger back down under. So that's how I make mine because I tend to knit with my left hand going but I'll show you now how to do it with your right one. It's a little easier to see when when I'm working. Again I don't want to work with this yarn that's there. I want to make sure I've got the working yarn that goes to the ball. Okay so this is the beginning of the second round and we're going to knit one increase one, etc. So I'm going to knit this first one. Oh, I said I was going to do it here. And then I'm going to put this on the right hand needle because that's where your stitches go. And I'm going to do another stitch. And then I'm going to add a stitch. And there you go with four. I want to switch because eventually we want four needles all with the same number of stitches on them. Again, we're going to go up and wrap and then add a stitch. See, we got a second one. Now I'm going to go into this one and do your best to just ignore the other, st the other needles that are just hanging out. If you don't like them, you can push them down and then kind of balance it on the ground so they sort of stay out of your way while you're working with the back. And then again, there's one more. So I have, I have two stitches. Two needles with four stitches each. Now I'm going to fake this out. I really don't want four needles and a one working needle when it's such a small amount of stitches. It's just like wrestling a porcupine. So what I want to do is I'm going to pretend. And again, I'm going to push these needles down that I'm not using. They're just holding your stitches. And I'm just going to rest them on the ground. And I will go up here and knit and increase it is really strange to watch my hands knit and increase through a camera okay so there's four and I could switch to another needle if I wanted to but they tend to want to actually flip around and make your stitches backwards when it when there's not that many stitches on them. So right now what I'm going to choose to do is I'm going to take a marker and put it on this needle and pretend that's the end of a needle. And then I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to knit one, increase one, and knit one, and increase one. I was trying to show it nice and big, and then I couldn't do it. Either way. Woo -hoo. It's really hard when you're not looking at it directly. I'm looking through a camera, which is odd. Okay, so I have four, four, and four with a marker and four. Okay, so from this point on, on, on the Something Different sock, what I do is I increase at the end of every needle or every virtual needle. So here I am. I'm just going to, this makes a swirl toe. It's very pretty. And it's more symmetrical. And you can use other increases, but um, you could use a knit in front and back at the end of the needle. 
uh, the last stitch on the needle and that would work and it would be a little more sturdy but I'm I'm very interested in folk knitting okay so there's five stitches now and I knit four so I chose to do this because it's a uh, folk technique and the truth is backward loops are somewhat weak but at the tip of your toe there's not a lot of wear in your sock at the very tip of your toe some people have it under their toes and some people have it at their toenails but this isn't going to be either of those places so I'm going to do four here the four that are on the needle and then I'm going to put that backward loop on swoosh my finger back down I'm going to move the stitch marker over and now I'm going to do another one, two, three, four, and one last stitch. And when you're starting out here, you might want to go back and count and make sure you didn't forget any of them. There should be five on each section. And at any point that you have enough stitches where you'd prefer to have a fourth needle here, then you can just work them onto that. You don't even have to slide them over. You can just pick up a new needle at that point and drop the marker. So this is the beginning of the Something Different No Pearl Sock. It is a folk derived technique. See, I've pulled it again. It's nice and beautiful. And working that end, end in, you're going to stab through one side of that and then you're going to stab through the other side. And when you actually pierce the yarn that's in there, that is the like that, with a sewing needle, uh, that, that's called a circular suture and it keeps it from coming back apart. Thank you for coming. I really appreciate that you're here. Again, this is Lynn Hirschberger, Lynn H. at colorjoy.com. I appreciate you very much. Have a great day.